So I identify myself as a cyborg because I'm psychologically and biologically united to cybernetics. I have a, a couple of implants in my arms that allow me to extend my senses beyond my traditional ones. So since 2013, my body is connected to online seismographs that allow me to perceive the seismic activity of the planet through vibrations on my arm. So now I'm here in Vancouver, but if there's an earthquake in Japan or in Greece, I will feel a vibration inside my arm. And depending on the intensity of the earthquake, the vibration I feel is stronger or weaker. So at the beginning, I had to get used to these constant vibrations, feeling those vibrations every day. But after all this motion has became an emotion, it's when I felt cyborg. It's when I felt that my organism and cybernetics had united and given me a new sense, the seismic sense. We used to see uh, the, uh, the, plan, the map of the world in this way, but actually under the line of the continents, there are the tectonic plates. The tectonic plates are uh, in constant evolution. They, they release and create tension, they create earthquakes. And earthquakes are the natural phenomena in our planet. They're constant, they've always been there, but they're still a very mysterious phenomenon. In 2010, uh, my childhood friend in Harbison and also fellow cyborg and I created the Cyborg Foundation basically with three aims. One, to help humans to become cyborgs. Second, to defend the cyborg rights, the, the right to design your own perception and new body parts. And third, to promote cyborgism as an art and social movement. Cyborg uh, comes from the word cybernetic organism, and it was created to define humans that modify themselves in order to survive in other environments, especially to survive in a space. The word cyborg has been used in many different ways in our last years, but we tried to nail it down in, in three di different ways, so three different ways to define the relationship between humans and technology. So we thought that one could be a psychological cyborg. Psychological cyborg is the feeling of being cyborg, is the feeling that you, have, you are psychologically united to cybernetics. Probably most of you maybe feel already psychological cyborgs. Maybe when your phone is running out of battery, you're saying, I'm running out of battery, instead of saying, my mobile phone is running out of battery. One also could be a biological cyborg, which is the physical union between cybernetics and organism. And the third, we thought we, you are, one could be a neurological cyborg, which is the modification of the mind and the brain through the union between cybernetics and organism. Also this year, we, uh, we just launched Cyborg Nest, which is a company that we offer, offers new senses to, to people. Usually through the Cyborg Foundation, uh, we encourage people to find your own way to perceive the planet, like your own sense. How would you like to perceive that you don't, you don't perceive? We usually imagine like maybe in 50 years and 100 years, we go to a bar and instead of asking where you're from, maybe you will ask what sense do you have? How did you decide to perceive the planet? But some people want, uh, want already like some offers, like senses that are already made. And the first sense that we offer is the north sense. So it's a kind of implant that, it, that we encourage to put in the center of the body, but you can put it anywhere you would like. And it's, uh, it's a chip that vibrates every time you face the magnetic north. So if you wear this for a long time, you eventually gain the sense of orientation. And it's also inspired by some sharks can feel the magnetic north and some birds. So I guess you, you, the way you move around the space, you will change. The exciting thing about this is that for every person will be different because it's not about information, it's about how you interact with this new cybernetics. So every brain is different and the way that they will engage to it, it will be different. Um, so I'm a dancer and I'm a movement researcher and I wanted to find a, uh, a sense that it had to do with movement, to perceive movement the deepest way I could. And I started doing some experiments since 2007 and the first thing I did it was to perceive a speed because humans we don't have the sense of a speed and I thought it would be, it would be nice to, to start experimenting with that. So I created like a kind of club that I would point on people and it would tell me the speed of the people walking in front of me. But that wasn't good enough because first I had to point to people and, this, um, and I had the numbers of the speed. And I didn't want to know a speed, I wanted to feel a speed. I didn't want to, to use technology, I wanted to become technology. So with the help of, of a friend, 
uh, we, we translate this to a pair of earrings. So um, if someone was walking from right to left, I would feel a vibration on my right ear and then on my left ear. And depending on the interval of each vibration, I would know the speed of people walking in front of me. Um, yeah, I did some projects about detecting the average speed of each city in Europe, so I could define uh, capital cities uh, depending on the speed of the, of the citizens in each city. After wearing this for a while, I decided to turn the earrings around, and this, and this allowed me to feel presence behind my body. I feel that all our senses are very focused on what we have in front, but actually the back of our body is a very sensory dead, a sensory poor. So I think like if actually this sense of perceiving what's behind, we, we offer these to cars and uh, machines. So cars can feel what we have behind, but actually we don't feel it. So I think if we, if we could, if we use this, uh, if everyone would have this, our way and our behavior would change and maybe new sports would be designed. Or mm, I don't know, like many things probably. After, after experiencing all this, I wanted to perceive a more universal movement, that my sense of movement didn't depend on people or objects around me. So I, th I imagine, like, if I would be alone in the planet, how could I perceive movement? And then I realized that not only humans move, there are many things that move in many different ways. The Earth itself, it's moving, not only rotates every day, with itself and around the sun, but it also shakes. It shakes constantly, and most of the time, we don't feel it. So I thought it would be amazing to transform this huge and natural movement to one body, and that's when I created the Seismic Sense. And it had a long process, and then last year, it was implanted. Now that I film the, the seismic activity of the planet, I actually feel much closer to nature. I mean, it's, I think it's very different to know that your planet is moving than to feel that your planet is constantly moving. A good, w a good way to describe it sometimes like I feel like I have two heartbeats now, my own and the earth beat, having its own rhythm beating constantly inside my body. <coughs> also, like my... Um, at the beginning, I had to get used to these constant vibrations. Maybe I would wake up in the middle of the night if there was a big one. So Earth keeps interrupting my daily life. <coughs> and also, I think it's unfair to feel that there's this bad image about the earthquake that is that it's damaging and, and it can hurt our planet. It definitely can hurt, but actually the bad thing is not the earthquake itself, because earthquakes have always been there. The bad thing is that humans haven't been able to adapt to this natural phenomena. And I see all this as art, as cyborg art. So I guess that the artwork of a cyborg artist would be the creation of a new sense. So I see like my artwork is the seismic sense, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an art that happens inside the artist, so I'm the only one in the audience. So in order to share my experience of uh, what I do, I, I create external artwork. And one of my pieces, it's called Waiting for Earthquakes, where I stand still and wait for an earthquake to take place. And when this happens, I move according to the intensity of the earthquake. This is a durational piece. It can last 10 minutes, it can last hours. It's just like, it's based on real time. So it's an invitation to the audience just to wait and, and listen to the earth, how the earth moves. And I see also it's like a, a duet between the earth and myself. The earth is like the choreographer of this piece, and I'm just interpreting the real, di the, the real date and the real movement. And yeah, I, I perform also these on, on the streets sometimes. I did, this was in Times Square in New York. And I also transformed this in visual art. I created this a sculpture, which is a 3D version of my arm. And it was exhibited in Barcelona, and visitors were able to touch the arm. And whenever there was an earthquake, uh, the arm would be vibrate. I feel that this is a cyborg sculpture because it's a, a sculpture connected to a living organism, which is the Earth. And I also do seismic percussion, which I, I'll show you uh, after this. Uh, I have two ways of doing the seismic percussion. One is based on real time. Uh, so, when I, so the rhythm of the piece is based on the rhythm of the tectonic plates in, in real time. And there's also another version where I create a scores. So the, what I'm going to play, it's the... Um, I made a score of the last 100 years of earthquakes that happened in Canada, and I put them all in 10 minutes. So the rhythm of this piece will be based on the rhythm of how Canada has been moving for the last century. <laughs> 
So uh, now that I feel that I'm a cyborg, I don't feel actually closer to robots or to machines. I feel closer to nature because I can feel the planet. And I also feel closer to other animal species that can also feel, uh, feel the planet itself. So I think we can really get inspired by uh, other animals and we can admire uh, how they perceive the planet. Sometimes we don't need to think about science fiction or imagine anything uh, unnatural. Like sometimes what we feel that it's very natural is actually very natural. Like for example, some animals can fly, some animals can create light by themselves, some animals can perceive ultraviolet, infrasound, infrared, and even immortality already exists in nature because there's a jellyfish that never dies. So I think if we can get inspired and just take what some animals have and put it in ourselves, our perception and relation to the planet would be really different. Um, so instead of, we think that instead of giving new senses to, to our machines, we can give new senses to ourselves. For example, if we take artificial light instead, like humans, we haven't developed night, night vision, like other species have developed night vision. So if Edison would have invented night vision instead of a light bulb, we probably would be able to see the stars at night still. Wouldn't it be more logical to change ourselves in order than changing the environment constantly? I mean, it's daylight outside, but we, we're inside this room with artificial light because we're unable to see each other with, without it. The, the energy waste and the pollution created by artificial light is really damaging our planet. Um, so I think also the word cyborg, when it was coined, it also talked about enlarging the human experience and that would free the men to explore. And my next project is actually uh, go beyond this planet and I want to feel the seismic activity on the moon. So I'm also working on like to move the seismic sense from my arm to the feet because I realized that it will, that it will be more logical to feel earthquakes with on, on the bottom of, of the body because it's the part of the body that touches the floor. So if, when I feel the, the seismic activity on, on the moon, this will allow me to be into places at the same time. So my body will be here, but my feet will feel the moon. So <laughs> if we use internet as a sense, uh, I, I mean, our senses no longer need to be attached to our body anymore. If we use internet as a sense, we can feel things that are happening very far from where we are. We can feel things that are happening in the other side of the planet or even in, in a space. So if we, if we extend our senses and explore space, we can become sensetronauts. We can be physically on Earth, but send our senses to explore space. So to finish, I really think that we are the ones who need to make sure that the union between humans and technology does not alienate us from nature or animals. We, we are the ones who need to make sure that the union between technology and humans get us closer to nature, to other animals, to our planet, and to space. Thank you. And I have the score here. Nineteen sixteen. Nineteen seventeen. Nineteen eighteen. Nineteen nineteen. 1920 1921 1925 
31. Nineteen thirty two. Nineteen thirty three. Nineteen thirty four. Nineteen thirty five. Nineteen thirty six. 1937 1938 1939 1940 1941 1942 1943 1944 1945 1946 1947 1948 1949 1952 1953 1954 1955 1956 1957 1958 1959 1960 1961 1962 1963 1964 1965 1966 1967 1968 1969 1970 1974 1975 1976 1977 1978 1979 
1981. Nineteen ninety one, nineteen ninety two, nineteen ninety three. Seven. Nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety nine. Two thousand. Thousand one. Six two thousand seven two thousand eight. Fifteen, two thousand sixteen, two thousand sixteen.